Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today, we're gonna make super, super easy stir plates, like the easiest stir plate you've ever made. And I mean stupid simple. We're gonna show you, or I'll show you basically, stir plates that are free or close to free. And then I'm gonna show you ones that are extremely inexpensive. You're talking a little over $10 per plate, $20 for a pair. It's super easy. I mean, chance of error, nil. I, I, I can't imagine screwing this up because you can adjust it. So things you're gonna need, <clears throat> pair of good scissors and or razor blade. Be careful with the razor blade. I prefer the razor blade, but be careful. Super glue, gel, I prefer. Phillips screwdriver, not medium, nothing special. A big knife, kidding, you don't need the big knife. Just had to throw that in there for fun. These are stir bars. I can hold it just right. Now I'll put a link down below in the description on things that I bought for this or things you'll need. I'm not gonna put scissors, razor blade, and screwdriver. I'm hoping you have those. I'm not gonna put this, I may mention it, but you can find super glue or gel super glue. The stir bars I will because sadly, sometimes people order them and they are like micro stir bars. I'm not sure what you're stirring with that, but I'm not stirring beer with that. So stir bars. The other item, which we'll get into a little later, is a super cool USB controlled dual 120 millimeter four inch fan system. Just the best stir plate system I've ever, ever built. So, oh, and beer, that's optional. It's very optional but I wouldn't recommend not having a beer while you're doing this. Unless you're playing with the razor blade, then you may want to hold off for a little bit. One last item you'll need. Earth magnets. If you have some around the house, a lot of people do doing crafts, you'll need earth magnets. The earth magnets that I buy are about 12 millimeters wide and about three millimeters deep. I have learned that the deeper they are, the better, because they're a little stronger. You don't want super thin ones, those suck. Yeah, putting it as nice as I can, they suck. 12 millimeters, you can go a little bigger, maybe 15 millimeters. I wouldn't go crazy wide, but if you can get like four or five millimeter thick, that would be awesome. And do not put these near electronics, I promise you. Do not. They're very strong and they will jack it up, especially screens or video screens. So let me show you what most people will tell you on the internet on how to make a stir plate. And before I do, please hit subscribe. Please, please share the video to any of your beer brewing friends or beer friends or friends. Um, post it on Facebook, Reddit, wherever, just share. That's how we build this site is sharing. So first mistake, and I'm gonna show you, and this is a mistake I made so you can learn and you don't have to make these same mistakes. Everybody tells you, grab an old computer fan, cut some wires, grab a little 12 volt power adapter from whatever, which is what this crap is. And it works, it does work, but it doesn't work very well. And some of them don't work at all. First of all, this is an 80 millimeter fan. Not recommended, it's too small. This also has a very slight curb that you can barely see. Does not work because it makes the magnets tip. The other item that makes this very complex is that you have to buy long screws, you have to buy washers, you have to buy nuts, you have to do all these things because you don't want this to be rubbing on this. And this is just a cigarette box. You can buy these at your local cigar shops for 50 cents to a dollar. 50 cents usually for cardboard, dollar for wood. It's a pain in the neck. It can be done. And a lot of times they'll tell you to take the magnets out of a hard drive. That's a pain, it is fun, but it's a pain. I'm, a, I'm an IT guy, I rip magnets out of hard drives all the damn time. But I don't recommend it. It's very hard to get it to work right. It's just a real pain in the neck. The other way of doing it, and you can grab a controller. This is a controller from a computer for a fan. And it helps me to regulate how fast the fan goes. It's a pain. Same 12 volt power adapter. The difference and why this one works 
It's a 120 millimeter fan. The 120 millimeter fan is the magic. That's the perfect size. And this one doesn't even have earth magnets. This one has two very large, I don't even think you can see them, but very large magnets that I put in there and I glued them and I had to put stuff to separate them so they wouldn't slam together until they dried. They actually work. It was one of the weird ones, but it, it does work. It does need a little help sometimes to get going or I have to turn the fan down and back up. It's not perfect, that's the point. But it's inexpensive. It did take a lot of messing and a lot of adjusting, but honestly, there's an easier way. There's a much, much, much easier way. And this is it. It's called Multi-Fan Series Cable Cooling Fan USB Powered, which means you have to have a USB adapter to plug it in. You can buy more expensive and get it with the USB adapter, but most people have plenty of USB adapters from previous phones they've owned. You buy it, it comes just like this in the box. Oops, things are falling out. It's designed to cool audio equipment. That's what it's designed for. A little zip tie. And you don't need any of this crap. Just take this crap, set it aside. You don't need it. What you will need, is you'll need some cardboard from one of your Amazon orders or whatever you need. And make sure you get the good cardboard, not something that's already torn up and bent like that side. You're gonna need something like that. We're gonna take these fans, we're gonna need this, it's foam. We're gonna throw it away, but we're gonna need it. And what we're gonna do is these things are USB controlled, little bumpers. This is the coolest thing about them. If you've ever done a stir plate, this has a speed control, off, low, medium, and high speed. Rarely do I do high speed. Medium is usually plenty fine. Low is decent, medium is better. But because you're slowly elevating the speed, the stir bar gets moving and then starts spinning. With the other systems, a lot of times the stir bar will slam to the side and you gotta start over. Or it starts, you gotta come check on it. Who wants to do that? That's annoying. So that's it. But if you look at the fan, you're gonna see on the top, there's a hard piece on top, like a, a casing. You don't want that. Flip it over. Flip them both over. So on the bottom, or its top, it says AC Infinity. We'll flip that over. Okay. And take that side off. And all these are is little, little rubber bumpers. You don't need them. You want them on the bottom, but you don't want them on the top. And I'll explain why. Okay, take the grill off, just a plain black grill. Now you can see the fan and you can expose the fan. The reason you want this fan exposed is you're gonna take an earth magnet and you're gonna glue it on part of that fan. And you're gonna glue the other one on the other side. And there's a trick to that. It's an easy trick, but there's a trick and I'll explain. Set that back there for now by my little headless horseman. So. Very, very good friends gave that to me. So it hangs nearby. Take the other one off. Take a sip of your beer. Optional for those who have their optional beer. A little hop executioner from a tarp terrapin. Okay, so our fans are now open and exposed. So what you're going to want to do, and this one's done, so I'm going to show you just for time's sake, is I've cut the front just so I can get, ex get exposed. You don't have to cut it all the way. You can cut a little small spot, but. I'm gonna show you what it's gonna eventually look like. Take the foam, match your cardboard, and cut the foam so that it matches the highest point of the cardboard, or the cardboard matches the highest point of the foam. Okay? You're gonna put it in here when we're done, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna help kind of give it support. 
because you're gonna be setting bottles with liquid and yeast in there and it's gonna be spinning around and you wanna give it some support. The goal here is to get your magnets on here and to get them as close to the cardboard as possible without actually touching because if they touch, it creates friction. You don't want friction, not to mention the bottles pushing down. So you kind of have just enough space that it's just literally like hairs from touching. So take these out. We'll take our razor blade and literally I'm just gonna go slice, slice, slice. That's it, I just made a little cut. It's not anywhere near what I did the first time I ever did it. Not a big deal. I would give it a little bit better support. And I've been using these things for literally going on about three years and it's all cardboard, but it's very durable. You take this and then what you'll do is you'll cut two more pieces that are the same size as the fans. You can see, It'll be a little bigger. The key is, is it's gotta fit inside here. This is the key. You gotta fit the cardboard in here. And if your cardboard's really thick, you might only need one sheet. Did it fit in there? I needed two sheets, because mine was a little thinner. Mine was cut off, who knows what mine was cut off. I thought it was cut off of a beer box, but that's okay. It's a little thicker. I set the fans in here, I close it, put the old system back in here for now, whoops, okay. How do you glue the magnets? Why do you glue the magnets and how do you glue them correctly? You take two of the earth magnets, two, two simple little round disc earth magnets, 12 millimeters across about three millimeters thick. If I put them on here like this, oh, they actually stayed. That's a miracle. Usually they slam together, but here's the catch. Let's see if this works. No, it does not. <laughs> here's, here's the trick. Before you glue your magnets, and you gotta know which ones is polar, like positive, negative, they're polar, okay? It's never gonna stick to that. I gotta flip it over. So see how my magnets are sticking? One side's negative, one side's positive, and then you need to make sure it sticks like that. If you flip it over, it's not gonna work. And what's gonna happen is when you glue it on there, your little stir bar is just gonna fly all over the place and never work. So what you're gonna do, get your earth magnets apart, which is about the hardest thing to do. Get them on there, make sure they're on there correctly, separate them, keep them in, well, you know which ones, which way is up and which way is down. Very simple. Here's your stir bar. Take your gel glue. Put a little bit, just enough on the bottom. Do not get the stuff on your fingers. If you do, I will tell you a little trick. It's called fingernail polish remover. The real stuff, not the crap, not the fake stuff, the stuff that's got the fumes. That stuff will work. It will help remove super glue. It takes a little while, but it's a lot better than someone taking a blade and trying to slice the thing off your finger, which I've had a friend do that when I was a kid and I remember what got it off after the fact. He was not happy with me. And don't glue your finger to the magnet or anything else because that could be a real frustrating time. So of course I got a little bit on my finger, but not so bad. And without flipping this over, remember I know this is the top, this is the side I need. I'm gonna flip it over knowing that that's gonna be the bottom. I'm gonna put the super glue on there. Hopefully enough, but not too much because I don't want to get it on my fingers. Flip back over. I think I got a tiny bit on my table. That sucks. I'll have to razor blade it off. It is what it is. You want to go exactly total opposite side and what a pain in the neck because it wants to slide. So, but it is what it is. And hold it there. Hold it there for usually like 15 seconds, sometimes 30, until it dries just enough that it's not going to go flying across the thing. And your fan may want to move and that's okay. I'm okay with that. This fan wants to spin itself. So let it dry a decent amount. And this should stick right to it. Just like that. Now it's stuck. I'm gonna leave that stuck for right now for just a second so it can dry because I don't want to jack it up. And we're gonna do the next one. Oh, oh. Grab our other. Stir bar. 
You want to do it on the bottom, don't do it on the end. Make sure it's sticking to the bottom. And the bottom being like a side is what I mean. Okay, so there we are. We're good, we're sticking. I'm setting one down over here. I'm setting one down over here. I'm going to glue the bottom, which I flip it over. Put it on there. Set the super glue down. Set this down. Let it stick. Try just enough that I can let go, not get stuck to it. Oh, it's moving on its own. Never good, never good. It's still moving on its own. <laughs> okay, it stopped moving on its own. We flip the other one over, we flew it. And you'll know if you didn't flip it because you'll have a problem. You'll have to redo it. That's where the razor blade comes in handy. You can slide it under the piece of magnet and see if you can pull it off. Okay. And hold that one still, until it dries a little. Okay, we'll take our thing here. Oh! You know you got it wrong when it doesn't stick. When it causes it to spin, it's wrong. So ours are sticking. Ours are great. So, give me a second. Super glue dries pretty quick, so I think we should be good. So I'm gonna take this, undo the little zip tie here, or whatever, little twisty tie. Like I said, this is USB. Oops. You can daisy chain them. Don't, it doesn't work. Just use this. Because when you daisy chain them, it cuts your power to half. That's why it sucks. So I have this cool thing that I bought. I love this. It's basically four USB ports and a power connector. I plug it into my surge protector. I lay it up here. I plug this into the USB port. I put this because we need our support. And that's what we cut this for. This is what we cut to match that same size. That is gonna help give us some elevation and support. We take this, close it up, and tuck this the wires back in, you can leave them out. I don't care. It's just how you do it. We're gonna set this on top of this one. We'll set this one on top of this one. We'll drop our stir bar in there. It's stuck. We'll drop our other stir bar in this one. Push a little forward so you can see. We'll do a little zoom in on this. And literally all I'm gonna do is move to slow. It starts to spin. Move it to medium. And we've got our little cyclone going. And that's all you need. It's gonna suck the oxygen down in and the air down in there and help the yeast to really grow and repopulate and basically replicate itself. And we can go to high, see what happens. High's doing pretty good right now. I don't always recommend high. Sometimes it throws the little stir bar off, but that's it. 20 bucks, two stir plates, that's 10 bucks a plate. Earth magnets if you don't have them, that's a few bucks. Screwdriver I hope you have. And super glue, well hey, couple bucks, local Walmart. Thank you again for joining Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like, please share the video. Super easy stir plates. I'll put the links down below for everything you need. It's stupid easy. And I know that sounds like a dumb word, but it's stupid easy, it's so easy. Thank you again.